Expo 2020 Dubai is not just a showcase for the latest in technological advancement, it's also a hub for business and commerce. As global and regional economies recover from the pandemic, conversations here are exploring the impact it has had and what comes next. We're here today to speak to Bricklin Dwyer, Chief Economist at MasterCard and Head of the MasterCard Economics Institute, to find out what one of the world's biggest technology companies has to say. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bricklin. Um, MasterCard has just released its Economy 2022 report full of fascinating data. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, so thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. So the Economics Institute at, at MasterCard just released our Economic Outlook for 2022, where we looked at, you know, what are the key drivers of what to expect in 2022? So we looked at things like what's happening in the supply chain uh, that everyone's talking about, uh, what's happening in the travel recovery, what's happening with consumers generally that shift to digital, and how we expect that to shape up in 2022. Okay, so can you tell us a bit about um, the findings of the report in terms of consumer spending and savings? Yeah, so at the Economics Institute, we try to take a unique approach. So if we can, you know, pull insights together, looking at data all around the world and try to tell that unique story. And so what we did is, you know, for example, we started off by looking at the trends in consumption that shift to digital, um, which we've seen about a 20% permanent shift in the digital uh, spending and e-commerce, particularly in retail, uh, which is going to stick around for a longer term. And that is substantial. We've also seen this rotation. It's a reversal of about a 27-year trend, which is moving from goods to services. So as economies and as individuals get wealthier, we see that shift from goods into services. And during the pandemic, with everybody locked in, we saw that shift back, that 27-year reversal, back into goods or buying a whole bunch of stuff versus services. Now we're starting to see that unwind as economies are, are reopening. That really substantial. On the travel front, we're seeing that, you know, a lot of the restrictions that are getting lifted or simpler travel rules in the United States, really unlocking the distance of what people are traveling. So. We know the domestic travel story, we know that people have been on the road trips and things like that, but it really has been expanding and people have been traveling a lot further as restrictions have been lifted. A lot of risks are still out there, I would just say that, you know, I mean with Omicron, Delta and everything else still out there, there's a lot of risks to the outlook that remain. Um, you know, potential for asset price corrections, potential for, you know, new lockdowns and things like that, but I think we are becoming that, that more digitally agile. Uh, economy and, and individuals and companies that is giving us a lot more sustainability in terms of growth. So obviously with the with the caveat that we can't plan for everything, um, what would your predictions be for, for the coming year? So I think that, you know, it really is on those core themes that we talked about. So that, that rotation back into services is substantial. That's going to determine that, that inflation outlook or how that rotation evolves. So as individuals are getting back to that experience economy that we saw 2019, early 2020, as we rotate back into that, as shops are reopening, some of the underpinnings of that creation of new business really are critical to where people are going to be spending the money. So still spending a lot of money online, but getting back into that experience economy really is key. Getting back out there in the world and traveling, like I'm here in Dubai today, um, you know, that travel spend has really been potent in terms of where people are spending. And that's a very different picture than what we're seeing um, from individuals and their willingness to go back to work, um, which has been uh, less clear, uh, to say the least. So that demand, though, has been substantial in terms of where people are spending money again on that digital, on that experience economy, that's where we see that, that potent demand. On that traveling, when people are allowed to travel further and they see those restrictions uh, unlocking, that's when they're traveling uh, even further. Can you tell us a bit more about the effects of the pandemic on the Middle East consumers specifically? So the Middle East consumer is really, you know, we're talking about a lot of different economies first uh, when we talk about the Middle East. So when we're talking about some economies like where we are here in Dubai, um, where there's a high vaccination rate, there's a high confidence in terms of travel, you can see that shift or that, that uh, non-oil economy really, really taking shape and continuing to evolve. You see a lot of other economies in the region like Qatar really gearing up for uh, the World Cup and things like that and trying to get ready for that investment. And not just that investment and the, the people traffic that is expected, but also that hangover effect and how they deal with that, capturing that uh, extended demand and getting that economy and keeping it on track. 
that really is the focus of a lot of economies in the region, as well as that, um, you know, nearshoring, onshoring, that, you know, domestic investment of how do you attract investment? How do you keep people? How do you get people back? How do you get that investment money in the localized economy? And how do you continue to drive that consumer demand? The people component, the migration component is significant in the region, particularly for economies nearby. Um, that's going to be a big factor in determining that growth outlook. Thank you so much, Brooklyn. That was really fascinating stuff. Thank you for having me.